actually super busy today. I'm, I'm kind of a bit stressed. So why, why am I filming myself? What am I even thinking? Anyway, I just thought I'd let you into a, a busy day at, uh, at my studio. <laughs> so right now I'm, I'm finishing a cello bow rehair, or I'm, I'm going to get it started. Uh, <clears throat> but before that, I'm going to have to get the strings onto a viola because uh, I've actually got someone, uh, so this is a beautiful viola, I've got someone, um, it's a beginner viola, one of my Vivace violas. I only sell it in Australia because it's too expensive to send overseas, like it becomes a significant part of the cost. And I, I actually hardly make a profit on these things, like most of the, it's most of it's my work, so, uh, so it just, you know, it doesn't make economic sense. But, uh. But yes, I'm going to get the strings on there now. So here we go. I probably need my glasses to do this. Where'd I put my glasses? This is like a daily search. This really is... Uh, <laughs> you really get a view into my studio. Also, you can sometimes hear some other talking. I literally have the classical radio on 24-7. I also listen to a whole lot of other music at times, but, uh, but uh, I love having the classical music on during my work day. Well, it's not all classical. It's actually from uh, contemporary composers all the way back to the Baroque and early music. All right, so my son actually helped me do the pegs. So, um, very excited about that. He also put uh, grease on the fine tuners here. This is quite a hardy varnish, so I don't actually need to put something underneath the tailpiece. Okay, I do fairly low action for beginner instruments just to make life a bit easier. Okay, strings are on. Don't know how long that took me, but I've actually still got to do the sound post, so I don't want to put it onto full tension yet. Forgot about that minor detail. Okay, so I've adjusted the, the sound post, just tuning up and then... And then I'll do, um, I'll test the instrument out in the shop. Oh, right, okay. incredible I mean it's just a $700 viola but uh, it, uh, it sounds amazing sounds really good that's my Vivace viola okay back to the rehair this is my rehairing bench here my floor is totally chaotic uh, so I'm gonna have to fit a wedge to this bow so that's what I'm doing now and then uh, uh, so it's a cello service that I did. I also put on new strings. So I'm going to have to test out the uh, the cello after that. This is the fun part. That's where the hair goes into the bow. But first, I've got to tie off the knot. Let's tie this. It's not a very um, it's not a very strong bow, so I don't want to put too much hair on it. Uh, too much pressure. Okay, so now I've got to wet the hair. I've got a little jar of water that just lives behind here. So this this is the first time I rehair this bow. So unfortunately, the um, mortise in here is terrible. Like it's just been drilled out round. So I'm going to have to make it square. I'm just filing the groove for the uh, for the hair to go in. It's very important that the hair is really controlled in the rehair, like that it sits very firmly in the bow. So I have, so there's no doubt where this, this, the round part of the hair can go. Like it's, it, it can only fit into this little part. And that makes a difference between a good rehair and a not so good rehair. I had to stick the leather back down. So I used a bit of glad wrap to, uh, to tie it on, sitting nice and firm again. All right, and it's time to comb out the hair. I comb the hair at least 20 times to make absolutely sure that it's totally flat. 
but I will also put a little bit of tension on one side and a little bit more hair on the playing side. So I'll comb the hair a little bit towards one side. Just making sure I comb it uh, very exactly and I comb it at a slight angle. Okay, just finished tying the knot. So I've just got to, uh, don't want to burn it too far. That would be awkward. Burn the entire bow here and start again. That's actually never happened to me. <laughs> You'll be happy to know. I use rosin powder to uh, hold the knot together. I love using sort of natural substances like that. Some people like using sealing wax, uh, but I find it a bit too hard uh, inside the bow. So I've got to put the ferrule through. It's really frustrating when you actually forget to do that. Like the ferrule is the ring down the bottom and you have to slot it through before you finish the rehair. If you forget, you basically have to undo the rehair again. It's really annoying. How do I know that it's annoying? I speak from experience. I've done that so many times. It's terrible. <laughs> Will I ever learn? Hopefully. Okay. <clears throat> Time to get the rehair into the frog. Okay. Alrighty, so that's the rehair finished. So it just needs to stretch and dry for a bit. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to finish off that viola and then I have to clean the cello because the client's coming soon. So today is a big chop chop day. I think the time has come to take off the jumper. It's a warm day. I'm wearing my peace shirt today. These are all things that are important to me. You know, us all living together in a peaceful world. All right, so back to here. I'm gonna, uh, this, the viola should have settled a little bit by now, which is great. So I'm gonna have a, a... Oh, Coley just texted me that one of my clients just canceled. So that's good. It's gonna, it's gonna make my day a little bit more peaceful. But still, I'm going to, uh, I'll try out this viola again. This, this time I'm gonna actually play it and make sure all the sound post adjustments and everything's fine and then I'm gonna go back into the workshop and stick in the label and while I'm there I'll actually put in the label for another instrument that uh, someone's trying this afternoon <laughs> tell a good instrument when I want to keep playing but anyway I've got a lot of people coming today so I'm gonna to have to keep going Whew, okay Back into it surprising I already sounded good because the samples were slightly out that should be much better even well I'll stick the label in and then uh, I'll re retry it yes yeah, so I've got a fair bit on today I'm uh, I've got two instruments here with open join one joins. Uh, one got sent to me from northern or central Queensland where they had an extreme amount of humidity. Um, and uh, the other one is a local player and he does a lot of, he plays a lot of cross genre stuff, you know, from tarantellas to... <laughs> sorts of things gypsy jazz rock you name it like he, he's, he's done it like a pretty amazing player okay so I'm just gonna take this cello uh, and pop it in the back here so it's out of the way the great thing is Curly's just come to get my shop a sweep so it won't look won't look quite so disgusting have to do an important a quick phone calls someone just called last minute so uh, Probably that's going to be a tough one. It's okay, I love you from a local Berlin studio. How are you? Yeah, pretty good, thanks. So, uh, your kids have an exam tomorrow, Curly was saying? Yep. And, and what kind of exam? Yeah, yeah. But the teacher would do that before um, before the exam, wouldn't they? Oh, hey, Alright, got that going. Ooh, got a phone call. Got a phone call from my dad. I love phone calls from my dad. I learned violin making from my dad, which is really cool. 
Uh, <laughs> I won't be able to talk to him right now though because I think I've got a client in about five minutes. Okay, I'm going to put this label in. Okay, I'm going to hang that up. first it makes it uh, it's a lot easier to rosin up <laughs> when it's a brand new bow. Okay so the viola um, yep the customer just bought the viola he's a brand new viola player so how exciting I hope you go well. So I've got uh, another viola client coming in for rehair later and then I've got someone picking this up uh, so I'm just doing the final check, making sure everything's fine. Yeah, but it, it seems fine. I'm going to have a quick play. Um, I usually play in this shop, but uh, apparently it's on the computer. I might just do it here. player um, it's a hobby player as well and uh, uh, she wasn't able to get all the work done that it needs doing so I'm sort of working it from the most important stuff which is a bridge sound post and strings which is for the sound so next time around she's gonna get the fingerboard done because it doesn't quite have the right shape and then in the end she's gonna get the instrument polished but uh, you know we're just working on a budget system for this one so this is the other violin, the one, so it had an open join literally from on the back from here to there. Like from here to there, I am not kidding, that was all open and they were wondering why the instrument wasn't sounding quite clear anymore. Uh, but that was a warranty repair, so it was a, an instrument I sold last year. Um, uh, it's like a hundred about a hundred and ten year old instrument and with those old instruments sometimes you can get joints that pop open it's quite a normal thing but I guarantee all my instruments for a couple of years so just to make sure that you know that kind of stuff is taken care of um, but the good thing is I was able to give it a service at the same time because they live about 700 kilometers away from me alrighty so uh, so that violin uh, that was open, where the joints were open is finished. Uh, I'm just gonna readjust the sound post, make sure everything's fine there. Wow, that's beautiful, that's actually really nice now. So I'm gonna package that up to send it uh, back to central Queensland. Uh, I've also given it a polish so it looks nice and shiny. So we're gonna make sure that it's all labelled and things like that and uh, I make sure that the instrument can't bounce around inside here that's really important okay. yep that's nice and firm all right. just putting the invoice in there so it's definitely no rattling Okay, so now there's definitely nothing rattling around and now I'm just going to um, wrap it up. Here comes my next client. Uh, he's coming on a motorbike, which is always exciting. Viola on a motorbike. Alrighty, uh, so the violin's all packed, uh, ready to go. I'm just hoping that my courier comes past. I uh, like to put a lot of fragile, oopsies. Fragile stickers on it and top load stickers and things like that. 
Um, and I'm going to head off to lunch now. Um, uh, it's just time for a lunch break. Got a bunch of people coming in this afternoon. Uh, someone trying some three quarter size violins, which is exciting. And uh, I think I've got another repair actually coming in. And then I'm going to be working on the uh, Klotz violin, which is the 230 year old violin that I'm currently working on. So that's always exciting. I, I love working on that. And that's actually a feature of another video of mine. But anyway, lunchtime now. Alrighty, I'm just riding my bike to lunch. It's a beautiful day. Lunch just arrived. That's amazing. And I've got really good coffee. It's always fun to uh, go for a bit of a bike ride after lunch. It's always good going past our amazing arts precinct. Got like loads of museums, uh, art galleries, uh, performing arts complex and things like that. Okay, I'm back from my bike ride. So uh, I've just got a cello here and I'm gonna lower the bridge in action just to make playing a little bit easier. Okay. okay, so I've got the strings back up. I have, uh, I've actually lowered the nut just a little bit. Um, to tell you the truth, no, I think, I think that's where I'm going to leave it. That's, that's actually very good. And uh, we're just going to try it out. Yeah, yeah. So, so yes, we've tried it and it feels a lot better. So it's way easier to play, which is great. Great to hear. Oh, okay. okay, thanks yeah. a lot. See you later. <laughs> okay, so that's a lot more comfortable. Yeah, it's a huge, it would be so challenging because he was a very good cellist. Um, you know, just normal right-handed cellist. And, uh, and he did an injury to his left hand. And so he could no longer play without, you know, without as making the injury worse. So, uh, so we swapped a cello around for him for a left-handed cello and he's been practicing like that um, and, and I really admire that um, and he was saying it makes him so conscious of of absolutely everything he's doing at the moment and in the end if, if or when he does go back to right-handed playing again it'll probably make him a better player because he'll be so much more conscious on how everything works. Alrighty, I've just got to put up the sandpost in this violin. Uh, I've got a lady coming to try it in about half an hour. Um, yeah, just want to just make sure the sandpost is right and, uh, and that should be ready then. Alright, I'm happy with that. Uh, just got to pop in the label. Let's just give this a try. That's nice. I mean, that's an incredible sounding three quarter size violin. Okay, so uh, that was my clients for today. Uh, and I've just got one more client. Uh, the, the uh, the boy trying out the three-quarter size and uh, then I'm gonna get on with the clots restoration uh, and I've got a little bit of other repair work to do but I really want to get this clots restoration finished hello, hello. hello how are you? good thanks come on in this is pretty beautiful <laughs> it's really nice so is this a second handy no this one is a new one okay um i do have a second hand one as well but i, I get the feeling that sound wise that the new one might win hands down if you okay. if you're open to that idea um i try obviously i'll trade in the other one that works <laughs> Thank you. Have fun playing. And just give me a call. <laughs> Alright, thanks a lot. See you later. Bye. You too. Bye. Oh, alrighty. 
So back into my restoration. So the clients left. Um, the boy was super happy about his new three quarter size violin. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> that's going to last him for the next two years. And then he's going to be ready for a full size. Uh, so that's always nice. And I've got a new second hand half size violin here. So there you go. So now I'm going to do a bit of work on this violin. I'm just putting, turning on the glue. I'm going to do a bit more retouching. Um, so this is also going to be part of my other video. Uh, so I've got to remember that. I'm going to have to rename this somehow. Um, because I'm going to do a bit of, a bit of extra retouching here. This area is almost finished. So, so what I'm doing now, I've, I've, I've basically done the, uh, the, the base color, like the the actual base color in the area. And but there's some a lot of dark patches on the instrument. So I'm gonna basically copy some of those dark patches to to kind of match it in with the rest of the instrument. So it's my next step now. So I'm just gonna add some clear varnish over the top, and then that's gonna need to dry. This evening I'm going to be doing a lot more work on the whole, uh, kind of retouching the whole instrument, the whole top plate and getting a lot of stuff finished. I can probably take this off now. Um, looks a bit weird, doesn't it? I'm going to put the varnish on now. So, so the trick is basically to blend the repaired area in with the surrounding area. But this is looking beautiful. It's actually, what do you think, Curly? Um, like, uh, so what I've, I've been working on this little area here. Well, that's amazing. So, do you, do you remember how it used to look yeah, like it was? I can't, I can't, it was literally there were two massive cracks I really here. I can't even see anything. <laughs> yeah, amazing. so so it's looking really it's good. Like magic. Thank you. You're <laughs> okay, just a bit worried about this, the varnish wearing on this instrument. So I'm just going to do a very quick sand, very gentle sand, and then we're going to do. I'm just going to do an extra layer of varnish just to make sure that uh, it doesn't wear off. Uh, I think he had it done about a year ago maybe and uh, just want to make sure it's don't have any extra damage. Alrighty that that's basically all I'm gonna do. Okay so yeah I'm done for the day I'm just gonna uh, close up shop um, and uh, turn off all the lights so I'll see you guys next time got some people coming over for dinner so it should be nice so turning the alarm on that's always very important uh, make sure that the glue is off otherwise um, turned off otherwise it really will be off and uh, and I'm I'm heading home now all right guys thanks for watching remember to like and subscribe and hit the little bell because when you hit the little bell you find out every time I post a new video all right thanks for watching keep making beautiful music all right bye <laughs>